Hi everyone, this is the ESP32 S2 development kit from Espressive, their, their current beta version of it anyway. You would have seen this in a previous video of mine when I introduced the ESP32 S2. Uh, be a link to it just here if you haven't seen it already. So this is designed to help people develop with it early on. It might be what the final development kit will look like. This is the module for the ESP32 S2. As you can see, it looks very similar to this space over here. In fact, it's pretty much identical. So whether this will be on board or whether it'll be a module on it, who knows? And of course, here is the star, the ESP32 S2 chip. Today, what we're going to do is look at my ESP32 S2 Pro S2 board, it's called. As you can see here, in shiny Enig, Let's get a bit closer. Pro S2. So this is my board that I'm going to be making and releasing. This is just a Rev1. It may work, it may not work. I don't know yet. I haven't built one. We're going to build one now. So this is going to be an ESP32 S2 with a whole bunch of stuff. Way more than what's on the development kit and obviously way more than what's on the module because the module itself can't be used without a whole bunch of other stuff. And as you can see, my board is just as narrow as the module. It's obviously longer than the module, but it's breadboard friendly. It's got everything broken out. It's got USB type C. Well, it will have when I build it. It's got two LDOs. It's got LiPo charging. It's got a couple of buttons on it. It's got an RGB LED, and it's got a little micro blade battery connector at the end. So for those that want to immediately compare the size <laughs> while ignoring the specs, this is a module that cannot be used unless you add a whole lot of stuff to it. And this is a full development board. Now the ESP32 itself will eventually have built-in USB support. Right now, the beta silicon that I have, that everyone has right now, because there's nothing newer, none of the beta silicon supports the USB yet. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to test and flash this with the USB port, but as you might be able to see down at the bottom here, I've got RX and TX and IO0 and obviously Reset is broken out. So I will be able to flash this directly from an external programmer, which is great. Now on the development board from Espressive right now, they get around that by still having a CP2102 on board. So they're still doing all of the USB connectivity and flashing via a separate serial chip, because as I said, in the beta silicon, USB isn't currently supported but I don't have a separate USB chip on here. It kind of defeats the purpose when you've got an S2. So until I get newer silicon, I'll be testing and playing with this board via an external program. Okay, let's get this built and see if it works. This is gonna be the first build of my Pro S2. I ordered five boards. Yes, there are only four here, but that is because I have one already loaded in my stencil ready to go. So let's stencil this up and then do a build. I will put some nice chilling music on and allow you to sit and relax and watch the build process in fast forward. Here we go.
it is hot out of the oven and it looks kind of okay I think obviously need to give it a once over under the microscope it looks like the USB might be okay the pitch on the S2 chip is 0.4 so it's quite fine I have to check that under microscope but from my naked eye with some glasses on it actually looks pretty good you might have noticed that I didn't place the JST connector it's because I actually have the wrong footprint for the microblades I have here there's two different footprints for the microblades so I need to get a, a different connector than the ones I've got here and the matching network I've only got a zero ohm resistor over here just to bridge the matching network now so the antenna will work because obviously it's going to have to be matched correctly the space over here is for an external crystal a MEMS crystal 32 kilohertz for the RTC clock this is something that won't be coming on the board as provided it's something that you'll be able to place yourself if you want to buy one and use an external MEMS crystal for the RTC it's going to give you a much more accurate RTC clock over longer periods of time but the actual MEMS crystals are, are quite expensive up to like five or seven dollars each so I wasn't going to be including one on the board by default when 99% of the people won't need one I did forget to mark these pads here as no paste so those two pads there are for the cap that you put on for that crystal if you're using a crystal if you're not then you don't need to use those pads but that's okay they just got some paste on them that won't affect anything uh, otherwise everything is looking pretty good will it work I really don't know <laughs> That's a really good question. I can't just plug the USB in, as I said, to test it because there's no actual USB support in the beta silicon right now. So I'm going to have to program it externally, but now I have a board that I can test with. That looks pretty awesome. So just a quick rundown of the specs of the board for those that don't know about the board, for those that haven't seen any of my previous videos about it. The Pro S2 board is a Pro ESP32 board. It's a fully feature-packed board. It's not designed to be a cheap budget board. It's not like anything you might get from China when the S2 chips come out. The board itself has 16 meg of flash. It has 8 meg of PS RAM. It's got two 700 milliamp LDOs. It's got an LDO over here that drives all of the 3.3 componentry on the board. And there's a second 3.3 volt 700 milliamp LDO over here that only drives the APA and also has a 3 volt out over here if you can see on the back of the board there are two 3 volt out pins here and here and they are for you to connect other 3 volt peripherals to your board like if you want to run an external OLED or any sensors or anything so that way you're not pinching needed current capabilities from the onboard LDO that drives the ESP32 or the other peripherals and it also means that you can control the power on and off state via that LDO with the enable pin via both GPIO 21 and the deep sleep state of the ESP32 S2. So if the ESP32 S2 goes to sleep, like you put it to sleep, it'll automatically shut down power to that second LDO. So anything connected to it will power down automatically. But if the ESP32 S2 is awake, then you can control whether the power is turned on or off by GPIO 21. So it's a really cool way of being able to shut down power if you're running off battery and you don't need those peripherals on and you want to save some battery or have it automatically shut everything down when you're running off battery when you tell the ESP32 to go to sleep. It's got onboard charging, LiPo charging with the onboard JST if I can get the right connector. 40 megahertz crystal over here. It's got reverse USB protection over here so you can connect the USB connector and 5 volts from the 5 volt pin and you won't have to worry about damaging your USB port on your computer or wherever you're back feeding the power into. There's also a shot key blocking the voltage on the 3V out pin so you can't power the board from that either. You can power it from this 3 volt pin over here if you want to but the second LDO with the 3.3 volts going out for the peripherals it's one way only. There's a reset button and a boot button and that's pretty much the board. It's single-sided which is fantastic for me because I think I'm a little bit over making double-sided boards and of course it's got the Fractus antenna which I still need to get matched so I'm going to have to build another one of these boards without the S2 on it so I can send off to my RF guy. So does it work? Well we'll find out in the next video won't we? Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you're new here please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got more videos coming out especially the 
does this work video of the Pro S2. If you are already a sub, please again make sure that your alarm bell is clicked. To all my patrons, thank you very much. I say it every video and I truly, truly mean it. You are all fantastic and I appreciate your generosity. If you want to back me on Patreon, check out the link down here. And yeah, until next time, catch you all later. Bye.